My name's Rick Ingram. I was diagnosed with acute myeloid leukemia, AML. My wife Suzanne and I retired in 2009. So we were traveling, working on our yard, exercising, just living a nice retirement life. We had just gotten back from a trip and I noticed I was short of breath. So the next day I was seeing a hematologist and he did a bone marrow test. This was uh, April of 2014, got the diagnosis. One thing that we would often read was that they seemed to define age like, like 60 to be old. And I was like, that's not old. I mean, Rick's not old. When we went to see Dr. Esty, we got several papers that we read. We read everything we could get our hands on. AML is a rare disease that affects only maybe one in 20,000 people. It's more common as people age. The typical age of diagnosis is in the 60s or 70s. Currently, when a, when a patient gets a new diagnosis of acute myeloid leukemia, it's the decision how we are going to treat the patient. And usually, mostly, these decisions when made, they are made based almost exclusively based on patient age. So we did a study. The goal of that study was how can we, when we see patients in the clinic, combine the features of the AML, which is very important to make decisions, with the features of the patient himself or herself, and by the help of funding from PCORI and the American Cancer Society. We established a large consortium of multiple institutions that worked in a collaborative way together to look at data from a large number of patients, we were able to come up with a new model that can combine the effect of the chromosomal abnormalities of AML, which is very important, with the age of the patient and with the comorbidities or medical problems that the patient has. The truth is, is that the therapy for this disease is routinely unsuccessful. So it stands to reason the only way we'll make it better is to try new things. We are looking at new therapies and our promise to you is that as long as you are willing to continue to try, I will never say you should give up. Physician will come here, uh, read a little bit of information about the introduction of the tool and then based on the patient current medical status and click on whatever problems and in the history of the patient and then enter uh, the patient specific age and then in the, enter the type of chromosomal abnormalities that's a feature of the patient's acute myeloid leukemia and then at the end the calculator will provide the final total score that the physician can use to inform the patient about the chances of survival but also to select the most appropriate therapy. Something like the AML composite model is very useful because it gives people, physicians, patients, information as to what might happen if I did the standard therapy. But I always try to say, look, we are prepared for success. It's going to be scary, but you have to, you have to do your homework, you know, find out what the treatment options are, educate yourself, be prepared to make some decisions that are going to have consequences and be prepared to work quickly because things are going to move fast. And so you do have to be prepared for success because the minute you stop being prepared for success, I think you remove something from somebody's life. What this model does is move it forward in terms of being able to have better information to make an assessment that for older patients wouldn't necessarily rule out some of the more aggressive treatments. It just potentially gives a wider range of treatment options to consider in spite of age or other infirmities that you might have, kind of opens up the possibilities more. The acute myeloid leukemia composite model or AMLCM really provide to both our patients and to the physicians a wealth of information and knowledge about decisions and about types of therapies. And with that type of knowledge and information, we really become prepared for success, success in fighting the leukemia, but also success in guaranteeing better quality of life for our patients 